All right, Javi Lobby. It's your boy, Javier, Javier, with the Javier, Javier show. You know that. You know this. Welcome to the Javi Lobby. Um, I had a discussion with a guest last week, Eric Hernandez, and I got a lot of feedback from this conversation. And someone really wanted me to go in depth about how we know what we know or based on knowledge. What is knowledge and how do we know that it's knowledge? In that conversation, we were talking about the nature of God and morality, and we kind of got boggled down into the whole concept of how we know what we know. Um, can you know something without knowing that you know it? And uh, I agreed, um, me and Eric both kind of agreed that you can know something without knowing how you know it. Um, it's just, I raised the question, um, how do you verify what you do know? Because if you find out that what you thought you knew was actually false, then it wasn't really knowledge to begin with. Um, knowledge is really based on, you know, certain things to be true. How do we know something is true and what is truth? There are different types of truths. We even hear me people make the claim that they have their own truth. For example, if you hallucinate and you see things that other people cannot see, how do we know that what you're seeing is not true. Well, we could base it off of what everybody else on average sees. If most or majority of the people cannot see what you see, then most people will think that you're hallucinating. You're seeing things that are not truly there. But the problem with that comes in is, what if you're seeing something that actually is there that most people just can't see? Could it be possible that you have the truth? Now, when we talk about science and we talk about the things we can measure and the scientific method being able to prove something to be reliable or not, at least reliable enough for us to call it a theory. Well, I am under the impression because I do take the stance that we can never really truly know anything with 100% except for the fact that we know something is happening. Now, this is something that I brought up in our conversation with Eric Hernandez was that you could only reliably say that something is happening, that you're conscious or there seems to be something called experience that you're experiencing. And I can, I can feel pretty confident leaving my thoughts there. Where the problem comes in that is we must act as if what we are experiencing and what is going on around us, we must act accordingly because it could be true. It may very well be true. We just can't verify that it's true. Now, in this world, you have to act in that way if you want to be effective based on your desired goals. But when I say verify, now, I don't want to get lost and people not understand what I mean. How do you know what you know? And this is a concept where it basically breaks down to, yes, let's say that I am sitting here having this conversation with you on camera and you're listening to my voice. Could one make the argument that that is true, that this is actually happening? Well, I could posit another theory and say where we're all in a simulation. Many of you have heard the simulation argument that we could all be highly advanced computer systems where somebody else is putting information within a system and we just think that this is real, but it's all computer code. Uh, we, we have examples of this like, um, you know, the matrix. We have examples of this like video games. Well, imagine making a video game that's so real that the characters inside the video game don't even know that there's a world outside of them that's making all that is happening in the video game happen. How could that character within that video game ever begin to really know that what he or she is experiencing within that world is true? We have five senses. We can smell, we can taste, we can see, we can touch, um, and we, we could do things of that sort. And that's how we interact with the world. Now, I know I only named four, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. 
And this is how we interact with the world. But how do you reliably trust your senses? We already just discussed that somebody could be hallucinating and seeing things that most people cannot see. How does that person know to trust their own instincts or their own senses? Should they trust other people and their senses to tell them that you're seeing things that are not truly there or feeling things or touching things that don't actually exist? Well, one could make the same argument outside of our universe or what our shared reality is and say, well, how do you know you can trust those things? If there is someone outside of the actual universe or the simulation, they could just be giving us those senses and inputting it. If you're familiar with the Matrix concept of the movies, you're basically plugged into the machine and everything that you're experiencing is not real. So we got bogged down into this conversation about how we can know what we know. Like I, I said earlier, and I said on the video, you could know something without knowing that you know it, but you can't know you know something unless you have something to compare it to. Now, this is where we highly disagreed on. I think that in order to truly verify anything, you must know what it could be and what it could not be. For example, this is a cup holster, right? This is what I assume to be a cup holster. I say assume because I could be wrong. This could be information in a computer system that's just nothing but numbers. But I have been led to believe that this is actually a cup holster. Now, if that is the case, then the only way for me to prove that this is not a cup holster is for me to know what a real cup holster is and to compare the two to say, this is not what this is. Now, Hernandez used an example that if he described his wife to me, I wouldn't need to know what she's not in order to know what she is. Well, in order to truly describe anything to anyone, a person must have a, a certain amount of information to be able to distinguish between what is versus what isn't. How do I know hair is not, hair doesn't mean foot or means hand? How do I know these two things are not the same? Well, I know what a hand is, so I know a hand is not hair. And I know what hair is, so I know hair is not a hand. And in order to properly describe these things to me, I have to have a general sense of what things are versus what they are not. Because that way, I could just confuse the cup holster with a chair. Because anything could be a cup holster in my mind. You have to show me that this is not a cup, ho a cup holster. You have to show me that... A chair is a chair and why a chair is different from a cup holster. Once I have a, a general sense of an idea of those two different concepts, I know one is not the other. But the reason that I felt it was need to make this video and to describe this on my own terms is because I have these conversations a lot about me being a nihilist and about me believing that the world has no actual purpose from top to bottom. Uh, I'm not even sure that we're here. So I hope that this clears up how I feel about how we know what we know and what is knowledge. Um, tell me in the thoughts, tell me your thoughts. Um, what do you think? Give me your feedback in the comments below. Tell me if you think that I'm mistaken on my concepts or if I'm overlooking something that discredits my actual theory on how we know what we know and what is knowledge. I thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, please, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. A lot of people watch my videos and they don't take the time to subscribe. Subscriptions are important because it allows me to get feedback on if people are actually watching my video, enjoying my content, and supported enough for me to keep doing them. So I really do ask that you subscribe to the channel. I have conversations with people from all over for different subjects about politics, religion, and culture. You know that. And I would really appreciate that if you support the channel. If you want to take it a step further, you can go to my Patreon, The Javier Javier Show, and actually donate just as low as $3 a month to support the channel. You also get special access to longer videos and extra content. So once again, thank you for watching. 
And if you hit that subscribe button, if you join the Hobby Lobby today, welcome. Thank you so much. And I am out. One in a million, a million, the one villain. Too hot to be in the kitchen. I'll end up melting the ceiling.